today on The Breakfast, National Assembly says CBN is the most potent threat to the forthcoming 2023 general elections due to its badly implemented Naira redesign policy. Also on The Breakfast, the Flying Eagles are drawn in Group A with hosts Egypt, Mozambique and Senegal. We'll be discussing these and more on the show. And don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Popo. It's good to have you join us uh, this beautiful Friday morning. A lot of people will say, thank God it's Friday. And hopefully we're all thanking God that today is Friday. I hope you're doing very well and uh, you're having a great time. We'll start off our conversation, as always, with what's making the rounds on, uh, you know, the social media space, what's uh, actually trending. Uh, we like to start off our conversation with what's making the rounds and what Nigerians are talking about. Now, first on our list this morning is that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's the EFCC, has arraigned Rashida, wife of Yahya Bello, and of course, the nephew of Yahya Bello, uh, who's been uh, governor of Kogi State, if you like to know, who's been involved in an alleged fraud. Now, uh, it's also reported that they were arraigned before a federal high court in Abuja. Ali Bello identified as a nephew to the Kogi governor and the duo were docked alongside three orders, three other persons on an 18 count charge bordering on criminal misappropriation and money laundering to the tune of 3 billion, 81 million, 80, 104,664 Nair. I mean, we, we have to take it the way it is. Like, every detail has to be involved talking about the amount. Well, in some quarters, you probably see three billion Nair. Uh, we have to let you know the, the, the several fractions to that. And uh, it's been a lot of conversation on the different uh, social media spaces and what have you. Now, some people say that remember that the, those who approach, the three governors that approached the Supreme Court, uh, talking about the Naira redesign policy, CBN and the deadline, and one of them is Yahya Bello, the governor of Kogi State. It probably might just be an irony that, you know, just as the approach in the Supreme Court gave the ruling, then you, you now have the fact that uh, EFCC is arresting or arraigning, uh, you know, the wife and the nephew. But, you know, according to that report and according to the judgment that's been given, uh, these funds were, you know, we're talking about the issue of fraud, misappropriation, and what have you. You want to ask yourself, a 21-year-old boy, how did he get through billionaire? What exactly is he doing? What's the business? Too many issues, but some people say it's very commendable, you know, in the fight against corruption, if that's the case. We'll proceed. Fingers are crossed and let's see how all of this pans out. Moving away from that, the Lagos State government says that uh, she, I like to say she over every other time but the Lagos State Governor I know the government you like to say Babajide Songwolu has announced the reduction of transportation fare in the state by 50 percent well according to the governor the price reduction is in all state public transportation on the road and so if you patronize the waterways system uh, this would take effect from next week as our yesterday, so next week is like next week. This is weekend. Now, Songo Lu uh, said that the BRT buses, first and last mile buses, have been directed to charge 50%, including the lag ride and also the lag ferry of the current fare to reduce the hardship of the narrow swap on resident. A 50% court in all fares, like I mentioned earlier on lag ride, which is a taxi scheme the first mile and last mile buses and also the Lagos ferry services. Uh, one would say that's very commendable. It should be commendable. I mean, even if it's going to last for, you know, just seven days, but we have this thing that, you know, this, this popular statement, they'll say, atol atol na winch. So this is, this is a good one. And should we say thank you? But 
Let's talk about the thoughts of Nigerians and Lagosians, especially on uh, the different social media spaces, especially on Twitter. And some people are saying, is it that we have few more days to the election? Really, what happened when in November, prior to December, the fares were high, Nigerians were going through a lot, Lagosians were going through a lot. Wouldn't, wouldn't it have been, been very possible? Is it that it's because of the elections? Uh, so there's been a lot of doubt and I, I haven't really seen a lot of persons who have said, oh, I'm grateful. But other, other persons have also acted differently. They have asked what happens to those who own vehicles vehicles i mean uh, some people are saying well i own a private car i own my own car so what happened with me i mean i have a car uh what should i do and uh, maybe you probably have to if you abandon your car and use the public transport the lack ferry if you're probably going anywhere uh via the airways no i beg your pardon the seaways and uh other means of transportation if you like well that's the case but let's see how this actually pans out, if there will be implementation. It's just seven days. Seven days from the day of the announcement is what Lagosians are expected to you know, benefit. Uh, we, we, we were in December, we were in November, where the petrol scarcity was high, but nothing actually happened. But it's also a reminder that government is responsible for the security and you know, the prosperity of the people, ensuring that life is easy ensuring that they are in the business of governance and it should not just be at a time because when you begin to act in a certain way when it's close to election period people will misunderstand or misinterpret you know your gesture or policy or action at a time whatever government does or government refuses to do would become you know a policy and when that's the case then people begin to give meaning to it and, that, and that's why a lot of people are thinking that hey it's just a campaign tactic it's an election period and this is a period where you know there will be several you know tactic and different uh, type of actions from different quarters and the Lagos state governor is not out of this but I think that you should accept it you know with your with gratitude <laughs> really saying for the period of time, just one week, you probably might just be enjoying that 50% discount. And we hope that those who are involved in this are also have also taken note to it to ensure that they implement, implement it for the time being. Uh, we move to a top trending, uh, next top trending, which is uh, three on the list, is that the Nigerian Immigration Service in Abuja said that uh, they had seized 6,000 216 permanent voter card and national identity cards from migrants in 21 border states nationwide and uh, that's what the acting comptroller general of the nis idris isa who disclosed the information at a retreat with zonal coordinators and all commander controllers at the service headquarters in the FCT. Now, according to Idris, he said that 2,393 voter cards and 3,823 national identity cards were seized from persons believed to be in unlawful possession of the document. Now, the states where the items were seized include Adamawa, Akwaibom, Bauchi, Edo, Jigawa, Kebi, Kogi, Kwara, Lagos, Nasarawa, uh, Niger, Ogun, Oyo, Plateau, uh, Shokoto, Taraba, Yobe, Zamfara, and three others. The cards were seized during the operation to prevent migrants from neighboring countries from participating in the forthcoming general elections. It revealed that the, uh, these migrants, most of whom hail from the West African countries, have been deported to their various homelands according to the ECOWAS protocol on freedom of movement. Well, the, uh, that's exactly what it is. So you want to ask yourself, Commendable of the NIS, uh, that's the Nigerian Immigration Services. I mean, we say kudos to them. We think that a lot has to happen just before the 25th you know, of uh, February 2023, which is still the date for the presidential elections. So fingers are very crossed. But the question you want to ask is, how did this person, 6,000 of them, get you know, the PVCs? How did they get it? Who registered them? At what point? How did this happen? Don't forget that in 2022, that's sometime last year, I don't remember if it was you know, very close to the end of the year, we're talking about the fourth quarter, or it was just in the third quarter or thereabout, but there were several allegations, there were several complaints of having INEC personnel in you know, this foreign, uh, I mean, neighboring countries, 
registry. And that particular report was debunked. It was debunked by INEC. I remember saying, oh, that's not the case. But you see, I, I think that that's where we should start from, the conversation. Because I don't think that these people use superpowers. These 6,000 plus persons use superpowers to come to Nigeria. <laughs> How did they get there? How did they get the PVC? I don't think it was magic. I think that there's a compromise somewhere. That's exactly what it is. And uh, that's a major threat to you know, our democracy. And that's a major threat to our elections, that you have people who are not. Because if you look at the Electoral Act, if you also look at the Constitution, you have to be uh, a Nigerian. You have to be a Nigerian to be part of this election. You also have to be of age. And the age that is recognized by the Constitution is 18. You have to be 18 years and above. So yes. How do we get to this point? As much as we say kudos to them, but there's a compromise. There's a compromise from you know, the umpire that is saddled with the responsibility of conducting a free and credible elections. An umpire that's expected to not to be partisan. There's a compromise. There's a compromise even at the border. How did they come in? Yes, we say that our borders are porous, but exactly how, how do you even explain all of this? So there's something that's not right. I think that we have to begin to investigate uh, those, these persons that have been apprehended, it's not enough to deport them back to wherever they came from, but it's also important to hold them and get the truth. Investigate, get the questions they have to answer. How did they get in? Who, who got them in? At, at what point did they get these PVCs? And you don't also forget that there are reports that over a million uh, persons have not collected their PVCs. Over a million PVCs have not been collected because these are humans, less even at the course of death. So if you want to do your calculations, a couple of persons would have lost their lives in the course of all of this. So if you have almost one million or one million persons who have not collected their PVCs, do the calculation. How many persons would have died? My point is, foreigners have the PVCs, but Nigerians, <laughs> a lot of people who live here, who are residents, who are taxpayers, don't have the PVC. We can't continue like this and expect a free and credible elections. We take a break when we return. Return. It will be time for us to go through the front pages of a national daily. We call it off the press. Please stay with us. Good morning.